What you're seeing are high shots. Now, here we're going to show you a videotape of the collapse itself. Describe that. Now we go to videotape the collapse of this building. It's amazing. A, a amazing, incredible, pick your word. For the third time today, it's reminiscent of those pictures we've all seen too much on television before when a building was deliberately destroyed, destroyed by well-placed dynamite to knock it down. I was amazed. It follows. And I'd look now at dozens of demolitions just to see what they look like, what does the nature, it's, it's experiments on how you bring a building down symmetrically, straight down and rapidly. You knock out the core first, the core goes down, the side walls lean in a little bit, and the building comes down rapidly because you've knocked out the support. Well, that's exactly how Building 7 came down. The dramatic collapse of uh, World Trade Center 7 is something everyone ought to see. Uh, I suspect that few have actually uh, looked at it to date. It's very dramatic. It would be helpful actually to show a demolition of some other building, which we know is controlled demolition. So you can see how it uh, dips in the middle and comes straight down and rapidly. And also you see coming off the sides these jets of gas and debris, smoke puffing out of there. and. Uh, that's very typical of explosive demolition. All these characteristics, the, the straight down fall and the rapid fall. And then you would look at, for comparison, Building 7. And you can see what I mean. It really does look like an explosive demolition. Uh, something that needs to be explored very carefully. But the characteristics are there. So you look at the building. You see it dip in the middle first. And the sides bow in a little bit. And then you see it come down. One two, three, four, five, six, just like that. And uh, right down onto its footprint, you see, that's the goal of controlled demolition. You don't want the building to tip over, which is much easier to do with explosives, actually. Just knock out the sports and let her tip. The trusses in the building made it very asymmetrical. There were 24 central columns, steel columns, and for those to fail in such a way that that building would collapse in the center first and then come straight down, instead of toppling over, for instance? No. The entire roof line cascades downward neatly into its own footprint. At the same time, jets of debris can be seen shooting out of the walls and going up floor by floor. After viewing this video, NIST can simply declare, NIST has seen no evidence that the collapse of World Trade Center 7 was caused by bombs, missiles, or controlled demolition. In the FEMA report, I think they were fairly honest. And it's, it's interesting as you read what they said about Building 7. So, you know, I'm reading with great interest. At the end, they say, well, our best hypothesis. Now, this is the fire and damage hypothesis. That's the only hypothesis they looked at, seriously. <laughs> okay. So, our best hypothesis, they said, has only a very uh, a low probability of occurrence. Hmm? And I'm saying, that's right. That's exactly right. Why don't you quantify that? But they didn't quantify it. Oh, okay. <laughs> but they did admit, you know, it has only a, very, a, a low probability of occurrence. And that's to their credit. The 9-11 Commission didn't even mention Building 7 collapse, you know. NIST and FEMA published pictures of damage to the southwest wall at the 18th floor and minor roof damage. The NAST chart of the damages shows a substantial gouge in the south face from the 10th floor to the ground, affecting three of the structural columns. Here begin the problems in the NAST preliminary report on the collapse of World Trade Center 7. The first column to collapse is said to be column number 80, which was untouched by the structural damage. This is evident in the fall of the East Penthouse, supported by column number 80. This precedes global collapse, but what happens next is not so easily explained. The building does not fall over in the direction of the gouging damage, and it does not fall over in the direction of the failed column beneath the east penthouse. Now, it is one thing to dispute the controlled demolition hypothesis, 
it is another to pretend that these pictures do not suggest it at all. shot at about 9 p.m. on September 11th. According to the FEMA report, the debris field radius was approximately 70 feet. The U.S. Post Office is on the left, also known as the Federal Office Building. World Trade Center 7 stopped at the sidewalk along the post office. Yet the post office suffered very little damage. It was less than half the height of Building 7, which was 570 feet tall. You can see Building 5 still burning in the distance. My argument is it needs to be investigated. There is another hypothesis here staring us in the face of explosive demolition. And, okay, you have the hypothesis of fire, but the official reports don't analyze this other possibility of explosive demolition. That is strange. Scientifically, I say, it's a viable hypothesis. They look at just the one, and I'm saying good science requires us to consider other hypotheses, in particular the explosive demolition hypothesis. Let's study it out, let's debate it scientifically, let's put it on the table for heaven's sakes. Uh, there's a lot at stake here to understand what caused the collapse of these buildings. We should be able to discuss it dispassionately as scientists. <laughs> it's hard to do, <laughs> but we should be able to do that.